Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 21, episode number 12 of our Worst to First series. Offseason and free agency has begun. So we begin looking at our own roster. There are tons of holes to fill, and we're not necessarily terribly strong anywhere at this point. The good news is we only have two players that are on the higher end of the pay scale at all. Uh, and both of them are in final years before they go into option years. And as a whole, we're only spending $68 million for the upcoming season. That's an incredibly good sign because... Budget-wise, for one thing, we spent 75 a year ago, so we're seven million below uh, where we were a year ago at this point. And a year ago, we were well below what our budget actually was. Overall budget was 120 million. This coming year, it's 128. So we actually have eight million more we could spend, and we ended up well, like I said, well below. So money for free agents at the moment is roughly 30 million dollars 30 million that we have that we could spend on free agents so our real intention is not to load up on a bunch of guys but to get one or two top players but definitely not old veterans because we are we are way more than one or two players away from being competitive so getting one or two old veterans is just a waste of money for us. We need somebody young that we can uh, keep around for a long period of time and will help us. So potential is certainly something to look at and not necessarily just going after that one or two big time players. So it really depends on what's out there. But the big point is we have $30 million to spend. Let's look at the internationals first. Are they not? Okay, they're not showing up there. Uh, I suppose they're in the regular free agents. They are. Like Sachi Hasegawa is one of those. Oh, and he's a starting pitcher too. Uh, all right, so we're in pitchers right now. I'm definitely more interested in starters than relievers currently. And right off the bat, you can see James Paxton is uh, would would be a fantastic option. Would be if he were not 32 years old. Paxton came through the Seattle system. And was the biggest thing in Seattle since Felix Hernandez only to then get a big payday from New York and leave the team over the last two seasons, including the in-game last season, where he really didn't do that well uh, this last season. Uh, but he would be a huge upgrade on what we have currently if we had him back. But at 32, even if it's only 12 days into 32, he's still on the wrong side. And as much as a few wins this year would be nice, it's useless. Like I said, we are a long ways away. Uh, Nebel is 28, which isn't bad, but he's a reliever. Demand is $3 million. That's That's actually pretty affordable. Uh, we could look into that, but I don't necessarily want to waste the money on relievers right now. I think we need, again, the kind of the long term. Uh, can I filter age? I can filter age. Is less than twenty eight. Okay, so filtering age, uh, we're set up by potential, and really there's actually not a lot. We have two relievers and a closer. Uh, sorry, three 
relievers and a closer. So four relievers uh, with three-star potential. And nothing more than that. Uh, oh, shoot. There's my Nestor Cortez. Uh, he's the only young starter around. Well, that's not good. I gave him an offer. Oh, no, he didn't want to sign. That's right. Uh, we'll try. Uh, you require about two months service left. Contract I'm seeking. A minor league contract, which becomes a guaranteed one year major league contract worth 900000 if promoted prior to 30 or day 30 of the season. Yeah, oh, I like that. Oh, and he may opt for free agency. Uh, I'm totally comfortable with that. So I was already saying earlier, last episode, maybe the episode before, that Nestor Cortez had a chance of being our fifth starter to start the season. Uh, and at just 25, it's not bad. Uh, let's go, ahead and go back here. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. There we go. Just starters. 27, 27, 27. And Justice Sheffield, one of my guys. <laughs> how did I lose the... Uh, I know how I lost these guys. Don't remind me. How could I be so blind? Uh, these seem to be the only players of import that, that we lost. He had 36 innings in 2019, but he was triple A all last year. ERA was above 5, and that's kind of the main reason but prospect ranking at 50 just goes to show this was somebody I uh, very much needed to keep around so uh, here's what I aim for contract wise my only contract okay yeah because Justice Sheffield also has a, a decent chance of making that opening day and neither one of those contracts are too big and they're definitely the young guns that are up here. And then after that, it's all just guys with potential. Now there are three guys here that are already something. Uh, Kyle Freeland. Let's take a look at Kyle Freeland because he's at two and a half, two and a half according to us and OSA. The only difference is his control. Otherwise we completely agree on everything and we've got decent. Uh, he was with Colorado and actually was at the major league level almost the entire season. Uh, just the numbers weren't terrible. Uh, they're not terribly good, but they weren't terrible. Uh, he's very average. Very average. He, he doesn't excel anywhere. Uh, at all. But he'd have some value to us. Okay. Same thing. Minor league contract, voided if blah, blah, blah. So these are you guys that are spring training, try to make the squad coming out, and either we trade them or they end up waived. They don't make the major league roster. Kind of like how those contracts are set up. All right, well, there's three options for that fourth or fifth starter.
Now, let's move to our young batters that are out there. Uh, Cole Tucker. We're definitely going to need to check out this Cole Tucker. Is this the guy that I already... Yes. Uh, so, Brock Deathridge. I, I had a brief look at this menu before starting the episode and saw that he had no demand and that he was looking for a minor league contract, so I offered him a minor league contract straight off. Uh, but here, none of these free agents have a ton of potential. Uh, but look at this Colt Tucker. Three-star potential. He's just 24 years of age. He's two and a half of three stars right now, which I think would definitely be... Uh, an upgrade on what we have right now. Remember, we were really bad at shortstop. No home run power. I'm not worried about that. Uh, not that great positionally, but he's got a good arm. Good base runner. Average there. They think a little less of him than I do, but either way, he's already two and a half stars. Uh, he's not looking for a massive payday or anything, so he spent the whole year in AAA, but he has played one partial season with Pittsburgh. He hit just 211, but definitely still developing. Uh, this season, he did okay at AAA. Uh, it's again somebody who you kind of go eh, but might be an upgrade on what we have and is young so again even if he's not I'm adding pieces that are at major league level or close to major league level that I might be able to flip into something else so I'm willing to spend some money on that especially when we have some money to spend and we're not seeing some young stud who is available out there. So let's go ahead and jump into a contract. He's looking for a one-year deal at 2.8. And I don't know if I necessarily want to do things with that. So let's knock this down a little bit. We'll offer him 2.6, maybe 2.5. Let's go 2.5. Okay. All right, so he's good with that. Uh, right now, we're at 24 mil, 28 left, and let's jump back in here. Now, let's lift our restrictions a little bit. We're going to change that. No, 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 that's not what I wanted. Change that to under 30. Oh, there is something. It's Mookie Betts. I thought I saw something. Uh, so Mookie Betts is out there. The one kind of key player, still young, oh, but his demand is insane. $43 million? I didn't even know contracts went that big these days. But I mean, look at what you're getting. Uh... Yeah, an excellent right fielder. And really good on the bases. I mean... And he's just 28. That's... 40 day, 42 days past the age that I was looking at, right? I mean, he, he's a month older than what I was looking at, which means he's still plenty young. He's extremely popular. This is somebody that, and it wouldn't put us that far past, well, 20 million past. <laughs> uh, but he's instantly the best player we have. 
We, we gotta try, right? OSA has them at five stars. And they have average scouting accuracy while ours is very low. And look at that, first season, 28 million. He's looking for a major deal. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, signing this player may result in the loss of a draft pick. But if you're getting one of the best players in all of baseball, I think that's worth it. Wow, he's looking for <laughs> a pretty hefty. Let's take one million off of this for each season. Let's turn this into, wait, it's vesting both. Try to switch that to a team option. And we'll, I don't know, five million. Put a buyout in there. Okay, and there's a couple bonuses. These need to come down a little bit more. So that's three million, four million less. Than what do you ask for each season? Bring that one down by the five hundred thousand. crazy amount of money. Okay, 40. is nine years. Maybe we can shorten this down. Seven year deal. It's worth a shot. Team option in the final year. Owners and the payroll exceeds your budget by 2.5 million. <laughs> okay. Well, easy fix. One. There you go. That puts us under. Maybe that's our starting point. That's not what I had in mind, to be honest. However, how do you like these terms? Back to nine years, and just straight 43 million every year. Okay, uh, and switching it back to a player option. And asking for 
more than what he was asking for before. Let's go to eight. Okay, get that where it needs to be. Okay, 35. Bring these all down by 1 million each year. And keep that as a player option. See, we saved 20, 28, about 30 something million. That's still quite a bit less than what he was asking. Uh, but he is asking for less than he was initially. I mean, he did come down by a small, small amount. <laughs> small amount. We need him to come down by more than that. Okay, uh, we're back to the nine year thing. And did he budge, what, two million? Yeah, two million overall is all he came down by. Uh, I suppose we, we go with the nine years. That He seems pretty set on nine years. I mean, eight years and he still got ticked, came down. So uh, we just shave this down the first two seasons a little bit. And I won't touch the other. The other ones. Oh, maybe just this one. There we go. He's still pretty happy. And we are offering him a whole lot of money. Nope. That's a fair offer. Thank you. Please give me a few days to discuss the matter with my family. Please submit the offer to officially confirm it. Could we have ourselves one Mookie Betts? Who? Even if we trade him after the first year, think of what we would get in return for Mookie Betts if he gets to that point where we just can't afford to keep him. <sighs> okay. Nick Ward. I would say has you as a pretty solid player. Let's uh, put you on a minor league. Let's give you a minor league. We already offered you one. This is how you strengthen your farm club. Yeah, just pick up all these guys that are available. Okay, um, sure, next week. <laughs> I love that 40 stolen bases more than anybody else. Mail and news, Mookie Betts contract negotiation. Not a foolish man, and I like the looks of your offer. That said, I'm not going to break off negotiations with other clubs quite yet. Thanks to the offer, it is fair. And unless someone else offers me a better deal, I'll sign with you, okay? Go forward another week, well, not a week. 
just a few days and ooh, big updates. Da, da, da. Okay, nobody signed yet. Just updates. Okay, trades are ongoing. Oh, there we go. Nick Ward has signed. Christian Gomez has signed. Elvis Perez has signed. Cardenas has signed. You have just been informed in the office of the commissioner that the signing of Mookie Betts results in the following compensation. Third round draft pick. Our fans are ecstatic that you signed Mookie Betts. The overall fan interest increase is amazing. I'm ready to side with you. Your offer is really the best offer I've seen to date. Thank you, and I look forward to taking the field for Seattle next spring. Mookie Betts coming to Seattle. We have our new number three or number four hitter instantly. Also, I have a right fielder or two that can now be moved. Send some somewhere else. We're also bringing in these other guys. Uh, minor league contracts. We're adding some death. Uh, Seattle Betts. Mariners today announced that they have come to terms with Mookie Betts, 28 year old right fielder. They've been scouting for a while. Betts will earn stupid money, uh, just under 40 million on average per year. But again, he may be a one year kind of guy, and then we move him on. Uh, a third round pick is all we've lost for this and yeah crap ton of money uh it's not my money <laughs> and we had huge space and he was the only big time uh player available and we managed to sign him he's played just under a thousand games with a 308 career batting average with 1100 nearly 1200 hits already He's had almost 300 doubles, 29 triples. He's got almost 200 home runs in his career now. He scored 744 runs and has 589 RBI. Um, he is your classic middle-of-the-lineup kind of guy who has both power and base running ability who can drive runs in and capable of scoring runs, which... Would put him more at a three than a four, uh, but what a signing! And just turned twenty eight after the season or at the end of the season, so we've got quite a few years of quality quality play that we can uh, utilize and. Guaranteed, there are plenty of teams willing to take on his contract in the near future. So we can absolutely take bets. We could take him right now and trade him to somebody else for all their top prospects. And that might not be the worst idea because then it won't actually end up costing us anything other than the fact that out of all the teams... We were the only ones who could afford to sign one of the best players in baseball. So that wouldn't be the worst thing to shop around, right? Take a look in, in trades and just see what crazy amount of young, super high-quality players there are that are more affordable than he is that won't eat up most of our payroll that we could get in exchange just for getting him to sign his name on paper to play for us. So he doesn't necessarily have to be for us. So whether he is middle of the lineup, awesome, big improvement, awesome, multiple years, you know, we're, we're looking at probably five to six, maybe seven quality years of Mookie Betts. Or... We trade him almost right away, or at the end of the first year, for massive prospects to go with our rebuilding project and drastically strengthen our farm system. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is the biggest move 
we've made. <laughs> and I, I don't even think it's really arguable, is it? That was a massive deal. And while we're at it, we're signing a whole bunch of potential major league talent that we just added. A good 8, 10 guys there. Uh, so again, that adds to the depth of the farm system already. And we can just start flipping this stuff. I know we spent a good chunk of last season working on those half-star guys and trying to move that along. And that just not working. Not happening. That's dead weight. It, it does take more than that to to package those deals and and trade upward. Uh, five for one doesn't work terribly often. A lot of people want like for like, and it's hard to do. It's really hard to do uh, in this game. Most games, that's usually something you could do relatively easy. Is you could package three, four, five players for one better player. Uh, that's how it normally works. But this game is just very anti to those types of moves. But again, as you go a little higher, that gets a little easier. Package a bunch of two star guys, you can get a two and a half, maybe a three star back in return. Anyway, I think. That's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. So we are approaching the, the winter meetings, and we just signed Mookie freaking Betts. Hell yeah. Him alone is going to add quite a few wins above replacement. So we, we just strengthened our squad significantly, whether we keep him or not. We strengthen our squad significantly. We might be having an upgrade to J.P. Crawford coming soon. Uh, Mitch Hanniger, I think, is pretty expendable now because, yeah, he's not playing another position. Uh, or our D.H. Vogelbach, right? That might be an easier one to move away. Uh, Vogelbach doesn't play any position well. He's just a D.H. We can hang on to Hanniger. Uh I mean, Fogelbach hit 208. And last season he hit 208. Season four he hit 207. He hit 214. His first year up, we won't count the eight games that he played in 2016. So Vogelbach hasn't done anything. And while he can hit the long ball, that's all he does. That's all he does. I, you know, uh, I think Vogelbach is going to be good trade bait. And at 27, almost 28, he's not the youngest one around. So again, as we're playing that long game, uh, moving away from Vogelbach, and I think Hanniger's a little younger, 26, 27. No, he's 29. Okay. Uh, and actually, he's about to turn uh, 30. So maybe we move Hanager along. He only hit 201 this season. It's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. In terms of the free agency market, we just got what there was already. So free agency, pretty much done now. Now we move into trade market rule five draft coming up. Uh, not sure how many players I have left that are uh, rule five eligible. And let's see, front office is that in here somewhere? Rule five is da, 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 where is rule five? Option auto renew. might be in roster screen rule five rule five is a hashtag i don't think i face too many issues with uh rule five there certainly are a few guys 
I don't want to lose Hackamer necessarily, but... Uh, Mills is rule five. I think you get to protect X amount, don't you? I have to double check the rules. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, that guy is another one we might want to protect. A lot of double A guys. Kalinich. Kalinich, please tell me you can play more than just right field. Oh, you play center field better than you play right field. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Kalinich is probably going to be starting center field. And can I move this? Uh, let's. No, not transaction. Uh, da, da, da. Change your position. Let's see, where is that option? I don't think this is the one I needed. Oh, maybe it is. No, there, there is some sort of option in here to switch their position. Uh, I thought it was in here, but set. Ah, there it is. It is in here. Set position. Center field. Better at center field anyway. So there you go, Kalinich now center field. And he'll probably be playing alongside Mookie Betts. Because the OSA have him at three, four and a half. We have him now at two and a half, four. But all of that scouting accuracy is relatively low. Uh, I think it's time for him. He's spent the last two years at Double A, but last year he only came up late, or the previous year. Last season he played the whole year at Double A uh, and improved steadily, actually. He was. He was doing pretty poor when I checked in on him. The, the later part of the season, he did quite well. Uh, probably deserved a call-up to AAA, but that's okay. I think he is going to be uh, with us. I mean, the number six prospect, he is now ready for the major leagues. So uh, we'll be bringing him up. So we have uh, Kalinich in center. We're going to have Mookie Betts in right and uh, we've got crazy, crazy speed in left with uh, uh, Malik Smith. That's a solid outfield. That is a solid outfield right there. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, for where we're at now, for where we're getting. And again, there's going to be a couple guys in here that are ready to move on, whether it's uh, a Hanniger or a, a Vogelbach. Uh, so we have a little bit that we can trade. We've already got uh, Long for second base. Uh, we're trying to sign an improvement upon Crawford, uh, who's just poor. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm already excited for just how much better we might be next season. I mean, could we be a 500 club just a year from now? Dang. I'm Kathleen Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. Be safe out there, everybody. Have a good one. Bye for now.